All right, so now we're going to look at vertically stretching and shrinking graphs. All right, so let's start with our basic graph of f of x equals x squared. So we get a parabola. All right, so now we all know what the shape of that looks like. So now let's graph g of x equals 3x squared. All right, so if you did a little t-chart, um, you would have 0, 0, and then when x is 1, you would be up here at 3. 1, 2, 3, up here at 3. When x is negative 1, you'd be up here at 3. All right, when x is 2, you'd be up here at 12. When x is negative 2, you'd be up here at 12. And so your graph would come down like such. It's like it's like skinnier than your than your uh, f of x equals x squared situation. Right, that's called a vertical stretch. The y values are increasing faster than they were with our normal y equals x squared. All right, so now let's look at h of x. h of x equals this time let's do one third times x squared. So now what what we're really doing here is we're taking every y value from our original function here and multiplying it by a third. So when x is 1, we're at her to third. When x is negative 1, we're at her to third. All right, when x is 2, we're at her at 4 thirds. So it's like up here somewhere. All right, see that? So it's, it's actually, it actually looks like it's wider in this case. Whoops, make point bigger. Goes to the origin, comes up, so forth and so on. Okay. Everybody see that? Okay, this is called a vertical shrink. All right, so we're going to generalize this up here in just a second. So make note, it, we're, make note of what we're doing here. We're multiplying our original function by some constant number. Uh, in this case, we multiplied it by 3, and that ended up giving us a vertical stretch. And down here, we ended up taking our original function and multiplying it by 1 third, which ended up giving us a vertical uh, shrink. So let's summarize this up. So the note, let c be a real number, uh, but not equal to zero. So again, we know the graph of something. Then if you take a, that real number and multiply it times your original function, you're going to get a vertical stretch if, that real, if the absolute value of that real number is greater than 1. And then the vertical shrink if the absolute value of that number is between 0 and 1. Now, does everybody, now does everybody understand why we're doing the absolute value? Well, because if it was a negative 3, for example, uh, you still would have a vertical stretch, but it just would be reflected over the x-axis. All right, so that's the only, the only difference here with, with adding a negative number in there. So uh, since we're just talking about the vertical stretches and the vertical shrinks, we're just saying it's the absolute value of that number being greater than 1. You're going to get a vertical stretch. And the absolute value of that number being between 0 and 1, you're going to get a vertical shrink. Okay, so here's an example. Consider the graph of uh, g of x equals the square root of x. We want to describe how to obtain the graph of f of x equals negative one-third times the square root of x minus 2 and then minus 5. All right, so kind of look what's going on, going on here. We've got x minus 2. All right, so what does that mean? Right. That's going to be a, a, a horizontal shift to the right. We've got the one-third here, which is going to be a vertical shrink. We've got the negative sign, which is going to give us a reflection over the x-axis. We've got this minus 5. That's going to give us a shift down. Now, there is an order that it needs to be kind of stated, and it's as follows. The graph of g which is this one up here, is vertically shrunk by a factor of a third. It's reflected over the x-axis, is shifted two units to the right, and then after we do all that, then we finally take the graph and shift it five units down. We don't shift it down five units and then reflect it and do all that stuff, because the order of operations says you got to do all this multiplication stuff before you do this minus thing here. All right? So, in words, this is what's happening for this graph. And so, Again, knowing this basic shape of g of x equals the square root of x, we, when we look at this function for f down here, we have an idea what that graph is supposed to be looking like just by looking at this information. And when we write it out in words, this is what it says, and we can go graph it if we need to graph it, or whatnot. 
right? All right, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.